Canadian Nuclear Laboratory's proposal for a Near Surface Disposal Facility, or NSDF, is a responsible solution for low-level waste that will be generated from the cleanup mission at Chalk River. Let's move this environmental solution forward. Say yes to NSDF. Visit the Virtual Visitor Center at engagewithcnl.ca slash NSDF to learn more and how you can support this initiative. We encourage you to have your say. Hello, welcome to a special episode of the Construction Record Express. I'm digital media editor Warren Fry, and with me today is... Angela Gismondi. I'm a staff writer at the Daily Commercial News. And it's a special episode because we're going to go back to some clips we had did over the last year since it's uh, International Women's Week in Construction. Uh, we're, we're looking at um, some of the interviews we've done in the past, specifically the past year, Angela and myself and Russell Hickson, uh, staff writer, Journal of Commerce. All three of us have done these interviews. The first one we're going to look at is Natasha Ferguson. She runs Ethel Fox Construct Group, I, I believe, uh, in Ontario. Uh, and, and she's sort of got a women-centric construction uh, firm. And so, Angela, you're the one who did this interview, so take it away. Yeah, so Natasha has a really interesting story. She's a woman of color in construction um, in Ontario. You were right about that. Um, so she's basically uh, trying to get rid of gender biases and stereotypes about women in construction. And her message was that it's, you know, it's not easy for women to get into this male-dominated industry. And so sometimes you need to kind of make things happen um, yourself. So she started in the industry working with her husband and then he went into a union and she took over the company. She kept it, she kept the business going. Um, she decided to rebrand the business and she named it after her mother and her youngest mm -hmm. daughter. So that's where Ethel Fox comes from. Um, and they, you know, do interior, exterior renovations and additions, uh, some landscaping and roofing, I believe. And um, as a woman who owns her own business, she wanted to hire women, but she couldn't find anyone to work for her. And so she started to realize that, you know, there wasn't a lot of women in the industry. And um, she also saw some things like women weren't taking seriously on construction mm -hmm. job sites. And so um, she decided to start the not-for-profit organization, A Women's Work, and she calls it a movement. And it's basically self-esteem programs and training sessions, uh, career involvement for people in the trades. And it's set to launch next year. And leaders in the construction industry are going to be teaching basic skills in the trades like roofing, tiling, and drywall. And um, yeah, that, that's about it for, for mm -hmm. her. So let uh, her clips kind of speak for themselves. Yeah, we've got two clips here uh, all about the nonprofit aspect of her, uh, of her uh, endeavors. So here they are. Was your company always focused on um, women and employing women in the construction industry? Or did that kind of evolve? That kind of evolved because, you know, um, with anything, like when you start it, you, you, I'm not like starting it and being like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, get women involved. It was kind of like my experience, the experiences that I started having, um, you know, throughout running the company and more so, you know, the last, I would say, five years where it just became apparent to me that there weren't a lot of women in the industry, mostly because I couldn't find any of them to hire. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was just like, Obviously, you know, I'm a person of color, so I, I already faced certain discrimination. So this was like, this was like, oh, okay, so this is like, I'm a woman and, and, and now also I'm, I'm, you know, being sort of um, like this gender bias narrative is being attached to me. And um, so, you know, a couple of things happened that really made me think to myself, like, wow, something needs to change here. And that was me going into a retail store um, that sells work clothes and realizing that there were no there was not there was like no section for women um and <laughs> me having to buy men's clothing um i won't mention who the retail store is but I, I i gave them a call on their customer service and i was pretty you know livid i was like you know i just came from your store and i'm in here and there's like a, a little cubby off to the corner with some stuff in it for women and there was just nothing there and um, they didn't really care. They actually ended up hanging up the phone on me. So that was the first thing. And then just the regular things that I go through um, owning a company like this, you know, whether it was hiring sub trades or, um, you know, and that just weren't taking me, uh, weren't taking me seriously. Right. So um, 
it starts off amazing and, and then they want to know, you know, where are you getting your work from? How are you able, they see how you kind of, you know, are working with your clients and there's sort of like ego there. And, and then all of a sudden they're trying to mess up your jobs. I've had that happen to me several times. Like even if you're paying them a ton of money, you're still having to, you know, chase them. Out. And I don't know why they're like that, but that's how it is. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've almost been attacked on my job site. Um, this is like a bunch of things that happened where I was just kind of like, this is, this is crazy. And then also just, um, speaking to other women in trades and there's not a lot of us, um, uh, you know, um, on Instagram and stuff, but people would be reaching out to me and we'd have this kind of common collective where we'd be like, Oh, this is, this is real. This is happening. You know, the cat calls the whistles. Oh, did you do this work? Oh, let me lift that for you or kind of thing like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of my experience and, and why I started my nonprofit, A Woman's Work. Can you tell me about um, how you help women, how you empower women, hire women? So we've just kind of started this, this journey, um, and I like to call it a movement because, I mean, just from what I've done so far, I've gotten so much feedback from women and men alike. Um, and, and basically, A Woman's Work is um, an organization that um, supports women in the trades uh, through self-esteem programs and training sessions um, and, you know, career uh, career involvement, getting people involved in the, the trades. And, and we basically want to open up, you know, the doors for women to these trades because there's a lot of, of people and, you know, just not just not women, but men as well that don't know, you know, how lucrative it can be being in the construction industry. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what a woman's work is. So as, as a woman who has been discriminated against in the industry herself, um, she doesn't want to do the same to men. So um, her thing is to be inclusive and to, uh, so the program is open to both women and men. And um, yeah, that's what she, she thinks that diversity is important and that men and women need to work together to, to make it happen. First of all, is it open to any, any women at all who want to join? Absolutely. And men too. I mean, okay. so I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of uh, men, I've caught a couple of men say, you know, are you discriminating? And I'm like, well, why would I discriminate against men? I, then I would be no better than the industry, the people, certain people in the industry, right? Um, so, so yeah, it's open to all women, you know, um, especially women just getting out of high school, um, you know, college, uh, people who are, you know, looking for a second career, who are looking for a career change with the pandemic, you know, it has been um, really difficult for people, you know, especially in the restaurant industries and, you know, other industries that people have lost their jobs and they're just kind of looking for um, a, 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 sort of a new start, you know. Right. So definitely um, women coming over um, from other countries, you know, that are just new to, 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 to Canada. Um, these are all these are all um, opportunities that uh, these uh, type of women can can use for themselves. And so in this final clip from uh, Natasha, she talks about uh, what it's like being a woman in industry and how she gets through it, which, you know, as, as I'm sure you know from talking to many women in the industry, is very stressful for a variety of different reasons. And she goes into some of those reasons here. There's barriers to entry for so many different things. And it's to be expected that when you're in an industry like this where it's male dominated, you're not going to have the easiest time. Doors are not going to just fling open for you. So, uh, you know, at times... I'm a very positive person, so at times when things have happened, I just kind of get back up on my horse and, and keep, I keep riding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, even if I've had these experiences, I'm doing something about it now. And this is my way of creating this sort of mission and this movement to do something so that other people that are coming into the industry um, are going to have a different sort of experience than I did. Um, so... I can't, I can't tell you, I know what construction has done for me in my life and my family, both, you know, on um, a physical and emotional and mental and also financial level. It's been really great to me, but there are some things in the industry that needs to change and I'm willing to leave that. So that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do right now. And I, and I look at it in a very positive way, anything that has happened to me, because I, I get to, you know, I get to change things. And so our next clip is with Amina Deeb. She's the manager of government and stakeholder relations with the Residential Construction Council of Ontario. Um, this interview wasn't specific to women in construction, but she does touch on that. It happened uh, 
the middle of last year where there was a lot of really disturbing incidents with nooses on on job sites. So Rescon launched something to deal with that. And then within that, we talked about you know some of the some of the discrimination not just of people of color but also of, of women in in the trades and so we go into that into this clip i spoke a couple of years ago to um a women in i think it was chicago and they were trying to get uh, minority women in that city to, into the trades uh and one of the things they said was as a woman if you're a nurse you're hauling just as much as any any guy is on a construction site uh, which i always found to be an interesting st and true statistic uh but the, the point they made to me was that people just don't aren't aware of the options they have because nobody's telling them that. And I assume this is one other goal of the round table to let people in, in non-traditional quote unquote communities know that this is a thing that is available for them to do. 100%. Um, through the, both the training and education subcommittee of the round table, as well as the marketing and communications um, uh, subcommittee, uh, we're trying to engage more with um, um, both guidance counselors and like the associations that represent guidance counselors in the province, as well as employment service providers, because some of the feedback that we've received from members of the roundtable who are very connected to um, uh, the employment agency side, as well as um, like guidance counselors, is that they're, they don't have um, some resources, a lot of resources that they can readily share with job seekers mm -hmm. as well as students. Um, and they just, they don't know some of the myths and stereotypes um, some people still hold. And so how do we um, kind of set the record straight, share with them a lot of the resources that we do have, like the job talks um, video series that we, we partner to create um, employment videos. Um, and again, just how do we, um, convey the message um, because we know in the industry that it is a great career um, mm -hmm. working in construction, but um, maybe we're not conveying that message as well um, to external stakeholders. And I think um, I commend the government for also kind of being on board with this. Um, and they've done a lot on the promotion and marketing side of careers in construction. Uh, and our next set of clips, that's uh, an interview uh, Russ did uh, a while back in March, actually, of last year with um, Lindsay Curran. She's an outreach coordinator with the BC Center for Women in the Trades, and she's worked in the trades herself, obviously. And in the first clip, she talks about community, for, creating a community for women in the trades and why guys don't understand the need for meetups and they have kind of preconceived notions as to why women would want to get together and talk about this stuff amongst themselves. For myself, I realized that I was lacking a, a community of peers who really understood um, a lot about my life. And um, I love this topic as well because it's one that um, I've just had some amazing conversations with some of the male uh, workers that I've had apprentices over the years, guys I've gotten to know through work sites, because they've asked about, well, why do you need women in trades meetups? Why do you need women in trades groups? Why, why would you need any of that? Um, and I, I tell them about, um, or I ask, and I ask them about their own experiences. And for myself, when I started in the trades, everyone, asked if my dad was an electrician and I I said like I just for the first I just thought it was so strange um no he's actually a well now retired high school principal <laughs> um and I thought they were just being sexist assuming that the only reason a woman would be there is is if like her dad was an electrician and after I was on the tools for a little while I realized that actually the truth of the matter was almost every guy I worked with their dad was an electrician or their hockey coach was an electrician or their next door neighbor had been an electrician or that's how they'd gotten into the trade so they just assumed that I it was the same for me um and that is the sort of community they take for granted that someone shoulder tapped them and brought them up into this and in the second clip, uh, Lindsay talks about retention, because that's one of the big problems, as I'm sure you found, Angela, when you've talked to people like women get into the trades and then keeping them in the trades is a whole other story entirely. Yeah, exactly. I've heard that from a lot of women. It's so important for them to connect with other women and share their experiences and share their challenges and support and help each other. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a big uh, theme that they keep um, repeating. And in, and in this clip, she does say that she says uh, you need the perspective of others in order to go move forward in this and, and mentorship and that sort of thing. And so let's listen to that clip now. Peer mentorship that 
is actually key to finding success in a trades career. Um, it's how you find out about work. It's how you find good deals on tools. It's how you get hand-me-down tools. People give you tools. Um, and, you know, it's how you find out not just where jobs are, but where you can go and get, um, you know, really, really big guy might have a hard time finding a safety vest. Same thing with a really, really small woman and a safety vest that fits. We need to actually have those connections with people who understand about our lives. Um, and so that that for me was I, I had this moment after it was after I'd gotten my ticket, which is uh, seven years uh, into the trade because uh, I took a bit of time off to have um, a child. And I, yeah, I realized I needed a community of peers. And so I started organizing meetups um, here in Victoria. And it was amazing. Like it be, definitely was one of those things where if you build it, they will come. Because it started a couple people, a couple people, but we had it every month. And more and more people started just showing up. Um, and it's not an organized event in that there's no, there's no schedule, there's no plan. It's just, we're having mm -hmm. burgers and come and hang out with us. One of the main reasons that women don't stay in the trade has to do with toxic work culture, where you're just not treated as an equal. But the thing is, if you don't come from a background where you um, have people in your life that you can check in with about situations, because they've been through there too. Like I, if I asked my parents who are all teachers or, or librarians, if I asked, told them about something happening at work and asked what they thought, I mean, they would just say, your job sounds horrible. Like. <laughs> Why are you there? Yeah. Um, because I was asked to spend two days cleaning out a storage room. And whereas if I ask that to a group of tradeswomen who've been in the trade for a little while, they'll say, OK, well, who else is on your crew right now? Is it winter? Did everyone else get laid off? Are you the bottom of the hierarchy? Because if you're the cheapest worker there, then hell yeah, you are <laughs> cleaning out the storage room for two days. That's mm -hmm. your job. And if I didn't have that sense of perspective, from people who'd been there, from women who'd been there. Like, I might just assume that I'm being treated that way because I'm a woman, because that does happen too. And sure. so that's what we have to look at. You need that sense of context. So when a woman comes to our meetup and we're chatting and I say, oh, what do you do? And she says, oh, I'm a carpenter. And I'd say, oh, like what, you know, you're on this building or what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm at this building. And I said, oh, the view from the top floor must be great. And she'll say, oh, I actually have never been up there. And I said, oh, that's well, interesting. Like, tell me like, what does your day look like? And then she'll tell me that she's a materials. She's been doing material handling for the site, mm -hmm. all the incoming materials, uh, making sure that it's um, inventoried and goes out to the right people as the job progresses. And then I find out she's been on that job for six months, doing just that task. And it's like, okay, so yeah, you're gonna. We need to talk because that's not okay. That is not how to use an apprentice. And so Russ also did an interview with Andrea Davidson. She's an electrical apprentice, and she spoke about why she chose a career in the trades and her addiction to collecting tools, because she really is an addict, according to her. Um, so in three clips coming up here, she explains how, how she got into the trades to begin with, what her path was, what it's like being a minority, because women are still, it was a single digits, I think, as of this week, that's the, the finding that's been, that's been uh, listed. And then she talks about how to stick around on the job. My path in high school really took me towards university. I was a very uh, high level competitive athlete and I went on scholarship and ended up being a dual sport athlete at my university in Montreal, Quebec. And I competed there for a little while and then I had a career ending injury. So <laughs> then I realized that, oh man, like this degree kind of sucks. This isn't what I want to do. <laughs> I don't want to sit behind a desk for the rest of my life. So right. I started kind of looking into like different avenues and what I could do to keep myself out of trouble and keep my myself from being bored. And I sent my dad to the local community college and I said, okay, like, you know me best of everybody. Go grab me some pamphlets. My teacher's in your mission. hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So he came back and he had picked up, um, I think it was like sports administration, um, it was a renovation tech program and then the electrical program and so i kind of was up in the air between electrical and renovation and that was kind of all she wrote i did a, a two-year program uh, i ended up deciding I, I could make a little bit more money in electrical than in renovation so yeah my my greediness <laughs> kind of <laughs> formed my I mean, path <laughs> your, your your uh you know 
you want a quality of life. I, I maybe a bit better way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> I have a very expensive tool addiction to uh, oh to my. pay for. So. <laughs> oh wow. In my experience, I've been about five years working in the field. I worked with a general builder for a year before I started my apprenticeship. And I've always been the largest minority. I have worked with many men of color and um, like it's always been, I can count on two hands the amount of women that I've had on another job site, let alone working at the same company as me. Mm. So I find that is an interesting, uh, dem maybe demogra demographic, <laughs> But I myself, I like I like being the only woman mm -hmm. usually. But it has a it has its a, it, its moments. Sometimes it can be very lonely. It can. I found at my last company there uh, there was the guys that were working in the field like myself, and then there was the ladies, the secretaries that work in the office. And you're kind of a part of both groups, but kind of not really a part of either group. And it was kind of a a very isolating spot to be in. What would be your advice for someone who is maybe new, uh, you know, like yourself years and years ago, just starting, you know, they're learning the tools, they're they're on some of their first job sites. What are some things that you've learned uh, over the years that, that you maybe could uh, could suggest to, to new young people, uh, women, people of color who are kind of fresh in this industry? I'd say for anybody fresh in this industry, my biggest piece of advice would be to ask questions but to ask smart questions. So if it's actually something that you don't understand, look for an explanation first, try and figure it out on your own within time, <laughs> an appropriate time amount. Sure. But then ask questions and make sure you listen to the answers and actually take heed of the answers so you're not asking the same questions over and over. That makes a huge difference because it shows that when your journeyman or an older apprentice is taking the time to explain something to you, it, you're actually paying attention and you're actually taking their, I use expertise in air quotes, but their expertise to heed and, and you're actually learning from it. Mm -hmm. So I've, I ask questions. <laughs> okay, so that's our series of clips. Angela, you have some general thoughts about women in construction having done a whole lot of work on this subject. Yeah, I, I've talked to a lot of women uh, over the last few years and I, I can say that, you know, I've never met or interviewed a woman that in construction who said, you know, that I don't like my job or I wish I was doing something else. For the most part, I get the sense that construction is a great career for women. It's rewarding and it has a lot of benefits, but there's also challenges. So, you know, they still experience discrimination and sexism, cat calling and being undermined on the job site mm -hmm. are just a few of the examples. Um, you know, they talk about not having access to proper tools or workwear that fits. They don't have um, dedicated washrooms for women on some job sites. They don't have a lot of other women that they work with, and sometimes they're the only one on a job site. Um, things that women construction have told me can be done to kind of fix this, um, you know, inclusivity training and education for everyone on the site, from leaders down to the, the people um, on the actual site, um, connecting with other women in construction. So, you know, these networking groups and um, especially mentors who can be there for them, who can, you, mm -hmm. you know, they can call up uh, anytime and ask questions and bounce ideas off of um, and working for an employer that understands these challenges and, and addresses them is a big thing. So for these women that I've interviewed, it's about more than just getting more women into the industry. It's about getting them to stay and them wanting to stay in the industry. So, you know, everybody kind of needs to be on board from the leadership right down to the people on the site. As I said, that's those are just some of the, the common threads that I've uh, come across interviewing all these women. Mm -hmm. And we've got a whole bunch of articles on on the site all week. Uh, and, and we've also got podcasts from last week uh, and we've got one coming up on Friday. So all of them uh, women in construction week centered. So if you'd like to hear that or anything else, you can go to Amazon Music, Apple Music or Spotify. And you can also listen on the Daily Commercial News and Journal of Commerce websites. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Mm -hmm.